High temperatures and dangerous conditions are keeping fire crews here in San Diego and south of the border very busy. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards and I'm Steve Price. There are several fires burning in Mexico tonight southeast of Tijuana. Now video from earlier today shows one of those fires creeping toward home, sending thick plumes of smoke into the air. One fire did cross the border from Mexico into the U.S. in Otay Mesa, but crews were able to keep it contained to about two acres. San Diego fire crews also knocked down a small brush fire in Claremont Canyon today. No injuries were reported there. And in East County, firefighters made quick work of a fire burning along the eastbound 8 near Main Street. The heat set several temperature records in cities all across the county today, and the warm-up is not over. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis has been following conditions all day and joins us now with a closer look. Good evening, Carlene. Good evening. So as we go into this uh, evening hour, we're still on the warmer than usual side, but that's nothing compared to the temps we had earlier today. So taking a look at the setup, it's all because of a surface high. Typically, we do have a ridge of high pressure that's over us that brings in the heat. But once you team it up with a surface high over the Great Basin, then that's when you're talking about Santa Ana winds. We had a moderate event today that brought a lot of heat, though. But now we're talking about backing off, at least for the coast, by tomorrow. 80s look to return as the 90s were peaking all along the coast earlier today, but the 90s will stay intact for the inland valleys and back into the triple digits for the desert. I'll go ahead and take a look at all those details in your forecast coming up. Back to you, Barbara Lee. All right, thanks, Carlene. As images of sometimes violent protests were broadcast nationwide last week in Oceanside this past weekend, a far different scene was caught on video. A white teen carrying a knife intruded on a peaceful protest. As concerns mounted, the demonstration's leader used that moment to show the power of de-escalating the situation. News 8's Richard Allen has more. Well, that's right. Black Lives Matter demonstrators were just leaving a restaurant Sunday, continuing their march here along Coast Highway when they noticed a guy in military style gear carrying a knife, acting strangely as he continued to follow the crowd. Well, as tensions began to mount, the protest leader known as Coach DJ stepped in, succeeding in de-escalating a situation that could have ended far differently. Coach DJ tells News 8 that he looked on this interaction as a kind of teaching and learning moment as he tried to talk with the young man and convince him to hand over his knife. I wanted to make sure that it was done in a peaceful manner uh, instead of trying to fight violence with violence. A challenge as others in the crowd attempted to intervene. You are not going to look to this stay, stay, stay. Relax. As Coach DJ, a former Marine, continued to dialogue with the guy, he also tried to educate him by profiling him. You're a white man. Racist. At a Black Lives Matter move with militant looking gear. I'm going to profile you like we get profiled. Oh, oh, I just wanted him to feel what we felt. DJ and much of the crowd was stunned to eventually learn he was only 16 years old. And I was like, oh, he's just a kid. He don't know any better. And after several minutes... We're not hurting you, man. I love you. I love everything about you, boss. A breakthrough. And an awesome show of unity. Yeah. An ongoing learning experience, Coach DJ says. So we got to be willing to educate the, educate them on things, and we also got to be willing to learn. You know, we got to we, we got to be willing to learn from the other side as well. Now, as for that 16-year-old carrying a knife, no charges were ultimately filed. If you'd like to take a look at the entire video, just go to our website, cbsa.com. Back to you. An emotional day in Houston, Texas, as friends and family gather to say their final goodbye to George Floyd. Everybody knows who Big Floyd is now. Everybody going to remember him around the world. He's going to change the world. Your family. Reverend Al Sharpton delivered a eulogy that brought attendees to their feet. Former Vice President Joe Biden also joined the private service by video. Afterward, a horse-drawn carriage brought Floyd's casket to the Proland Cemetery, where he was laid to rest alongside his mother. 
City leaders in La Mesa voted unanimously tonight to seek an independent review of their actions before, during and after officers got aggressive with protesters last month. What started as a peaceful protest May 30th later turned violent. Eventually, officers and sheriff's deputies fired tear gas, pepper bullets and beanbag rounds into the crowd, hitting a 59 year old grandmother in the head. Leslie Furcron was in intensive care for several days and was finally released from the hospital earlier today. Multiple speakers at tonight's meeting blasted the police department's handling of that and other incidents and called for officers that don't respect everyone to be fired. The jewel of the hills is tarnished by systemic racism, denial and a total lack of accountability for the police. The independent review will look at the actions of the police, fire department and city leaders and will be asked to make recommendations for improvements moving forward. In the meantime, a man arrested during that protest outside La Mesa Police Headquarters is facing federal charges for allegedly possessing Molotov cocktails. Police say Zachary Karras was arrested for not leaving the area after orders to do so were given. Officers say they later discovered two Molotov cocktails and fireworks on him. The complaint does not accuse Karras of setting fire to any of the businesses that were burned. If convicted, he faces a $250,000 fine and up to 10 years in jail. On Capitol Hill, the debate over a law enforcement overhaul is heating up. The White House is now working with Senate Republicans on a plan to reform police departments all across the country. We're going to work and we're going to talk about ideas, how we can do it better and how we can do it, if possible, in a much more gentle fashion. Democrats released their overhaul bill yesterday, which would make it easier to prosecute officers for brutality, create a registry to track police misconduct, and set new use of force standards. CBS News has learned that Senator Scott's proposals could be released by the end of the week. Tonight, San Diego County officials report 8,729 confirmed coronavirus cases. That's an increase of 110 since yesterday. Five more people died for a countywide total of 301. All of today's reported deaths were people with underlying health conditions. The county tested just under 4,000 people yesterday, still shy of its goal of 5,200 tests a day. So far, just under 200,000 people have been tested across San Diego. As coronavirus restrictions in San Diego continue to relax, summer camps are making big plans to reopen. But campers and counselors will have a much different experience this summer. News 8's Lamore Abrams looks into what's being done to keep the kids safe during the pandemic. Well, camp here at the Y is just two weeks away. In fact, several area camps are counting down too. But the list of safety precautions is so long, it's taken counselors weeks to plan and train for that whole new experience. It wouldn't be summertime at the San Diego YMCA without swimming pools and field trips. Only this year, campers will have to make do with neither. We're really looking at taking it back to the basics. Camp originally started to bring kids together in a learning environment where they could make friends, and that's still the impact we're wanting to have this summer. So Matt Coral is the region's YMCA camp director. She says COVID-19 guidelines will mean innovative, socially distanced activities like using pool noodles instead of hands to play tag and in the process, teaching new moral obligations. We're always talking about how to externally care for each other, but now the message is actually, if you take care of yourself, if you're washing your hands and covering your mouth, and you're staying actually away from your friends when you're doing activities, we're actually helping people care for each other. New health guidelines will also require daily temperature checks for counselors and campers, and groups will be made up of 10 instead of 12 kids. Please do open. But even with parents eager to get their little ones out of the house. They're tugging at my legs when I'm trying to get some work done, so. Smaller group sizes will mean not everyone will get to go to camp. Most of our branches are 70, between 50 and 70% full. During a non-pandemic summer, YMCA runs camps for 50,000 children across San Diego. They're expecting a third of that this summer. It would be a huge blessing. There will, however, be hundreds of counselors on hand, more than 430 returning from furlough to meet this year's growing demands. It takes a community to serve a community. And so there's been a lot of us a lot of different experts, a lot of different brains and 
um, going into making this a reality. Now to sign up and to find out if the camp in your area is reopening, just visit our website, cbsa.com, and click on the help button. The city of San Diego is taking orders ahead of council approval on an emergency ordinance to allow open air dining and shopping in streets, sidewalks and parking lots to boost business. The city released a guide for businesses submitting a plan under the proposed temporary outdoor permit project. North Park, downtown Little Italy and now La Jolla Shores are interested. News 8's Abby Alford is in La Jolla Shores to explain why they hope it will be streamlined to avoid the long process. Here at Piatti in La Jolla Shores, the bar area usually has 13 bar stools. They've gone from nine to four tables. They want to be able to expand that dining experience out into the street, just like many of the restaurants and businesses. They say that permit cannot come soon enough. Dining al fresco like the Italians do. Such a great idea and simple and easy to do. The La Jolla Shore Association, a nonprofit, says the eight restaurants and other businesses on Avenida de Playa are on board to close a block that would allow dining and parking spots and keep a 20 foot fire access. We've been working with the city since April to try to get it accomplished. And every time we reach a certain place that they tell us to go, then they change the game plan. So we're really frustrated at this point. But now the city's working on a temporary outdoor permit that would streamline and waive the hundreds of dollars in permit fees to dine in the street, sidewalk, or parking lots. Alcohol beverage control will also allow drinks in the designated spaces. We're going to take that process and make it easier so that people can go about their business. On Friday, Development Services released a website that will guide the businesses. It has to meet transit, public safety, and ADA regulations. The emergency ordinance still needs to go to council for a full vote, which will happen by the end of the month. We really want to make sure business owners, especially um, uh, minority and communities of color, that we've got as much information and technical assistance out there. Parking's a concern. There's no loud music. You see, this is not for social gatherings. The temporary permit would expire after 45 days and could be extended, and it's only allowed during certain hours, say 3 to 10 p.m. Thursday through Sunday. Restaurants want it permanent. Restaurants and operators having a really time, a hard time operating. While this is fluid, restaurants still want to do it right. Not something that you just slap some tables out in the street and call it a day. The city's encouraging businesses to submit their outdoor permit plan so they can get in the queue and get this done faster. To learn more, just go to our website at cbsa.com. Click on the help button.